Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our Compact Clean and Tileable Blueprint series. We are almost done with all the major buildings, wrapping up here with blenders as the, the last thing before tier 9 at least. And this one is pretty similar to the ones we've done before, but let's go ahead and get started. I am using the hover pack because, well, by the time you have blenders, you have the hover pack, which is quite nice, I will say. So as usual, we'll just grab our blender here, face the outputs towards the computer because that's where the white arrow ends up. I'll place it in the middle of our Mark II blueprint designer. Just a reminder, we've graduated from the Mark I blueprint designer. And the only complication with the blender is that it just has a lot of inputs. It's got four inputs like the manufacturer, but two of them are fluid inputs. So we will put the fluids on the bottom rather than the belts on the bottom. And that's because um, that way we don't need as much head lift for whatever our inputs are. But of course, you can rearrange these things if you'd like. The only thing is that if you have a belt on the bottom, it can't be at level one. It has to be a level two. Otherwise, the uh, lift won't work right. Though there is a way you can get lifts to only go one square up. I will not be using that. Uh, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for logistics mark five. So we're going to be using mark five belts here and we'll be using tier two pipes because you will have mark five belts by the time you're doing this. And again, we're going to do two stackable pipeline supports. You basically line up the edge right with the, the output here because there's no... We can't go over the building like we've done some other times, so we just have to go across the front of the building. And then you can hook up your pipelines. I'm going to leave them on horizontal to vertical mode, though when you're building a straight line, the mode shouldn't matter. And now we need to snap our junctions. This one seems to work nicely. Sometimes this one works. Sometimes it doesn't when you're snapping it. Just a reminder, the best way I've found to get junctions to snap properly is to put splitters on the ground in front of them or make a splitter tower and then they will often snap properly once you've done that. It kind of depends though. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like this one's not snapping right now. Couldn't tell you why. Uh, it really, the pipeline junction snapping seems to be a complete mystery and now uh, even the splitter's not working. Oh boy. So that's my normal method. That's not, you know, this is a good example of what may happen to you out in the world. Sometimes it just won't snap no matter what you do. Um, that's actually really weird that it's not snapping. Um, sometimes you can get it to snap by building, you know, a pipe. Um, so we'll try that. Nope, that's not working either. Very interesting. I don't, uh, I don't know why sometimes it will refuse to work like it is right now. What if I put another one? Will that help? No. What if I put a junction here? Will that help? No. What if I put a junction on the ground in front of it? Will that help? No. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why, but sometimes it really doesn't want to snap. So in that case, I do just free free ball it. Um, we already tried that. So basically, you just make sure that you are, you know, in a perfect straight line with where you want to be, and it'll be within a few pixels of where it needs to go. And maybe it'll work for you, and you won't have to do what I just did. That is very odd. Sometimes it even. Gosh, I wonder if we built the belt above it. So let's go ahead and build our conveyor poles on top here. And we'll build the belts across standard style. You know, we just go left to right because that's how we've been doing the blueprints in this series. And let's see. What if I were to place a splitter like right above it? Of course, that won't lock, but I can build a little splitter tower, which then should get me to be able to lock a splitter there. And then will it let me build a junction underneath? No, it still doesn't snap. Though this helps give you another visual aid of like where exactly to place it. So you wanna, you know, if you just get it perfectly centered, like that would be too far to the left, that would be too far to the right. So, you know, you can get within a few pixels of where you need to be here. And hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> it's really not how I like to do it though. I. I don't remember having a, an issue with that last time, so that just means it's inconsistent. Anyway, uh, to hook up our pipelines, you can use horizontal to vertical, or you can use noodle. They're slightly different, so you can compare the two. I personally like the horizontal to vertical. It looks a little more 
um, realistic to me. And then this one obviously is going to do weird things with horizontal to vertical. So what you do is you bring out one, two, three squares. I think it's three. It's been a hot minute since I did this. Yeah. And then you have a nice kind of, you know, right angle corner there and you can remove this support if you like and then it looks nice and beautiful so again we come out and connect there and then this one comes out not one not two but three units connect this down remove the support and you can't tell we freehanded that that looks nice and perfectly vertical so there you go so pipes are connected and then pretty similar to what we've done in other episodes you bring the conveyor belts out three and people have left comments on other ways to do this um one two three but this is the way that i do it there are others that work as far as you know getting your your lifts properly snapped and whatnot um you know the fact that there's more than one way to get things done in this game is a good thing so this one's not snapping as we've said before you snap it to the top of the lift and then it will snap to the belt when that's not working. To build the top of the lift. Now it's snapping to the belt. And then we deconstruct our lifts so that they'll connect properly. And then we are good to go. I have been in the habit of removing the... And you want to build from bottom to top with this one, by the way. Because uh, if you build top to bottom, they'll be spaced out too far. So you can see that doesn't even connect properly because it's so far away. So you do want to build bottom to top, otherwise you'll be uh, taking up extra room on the blueprint. And I have been deconstructing these conveyor poles so far in this series, so I will continue doing that. Just because you don't really need them, it's just wasted cost. If you like the way they look though, obviously feel free to leave them in. And now we'll do the front. It's pretty much the same as the back. We grab our stackable pole. This time we only need one, and we need one belt, and go across. Get that hooked up. Pipeline across, belt goes the opposite direction. So our inputs and outputs end up on the same edge here. But again, you might prefer a build where the inputs come in that direction and then they go out this direction to kind of go to the next build so whichever way works for you is completely acceptable we'll get our junctions snapped here that one seemed to work and that one seemed to work nice that makes me feel lucky compared to last time and then with our outputs we come out again three tiles three tiles what was that one two three Remove the poles now or later, doesn't matter. Get our dummy lifts placed. Sometimes also, um, I just removed my conveyor lift hotkey. Sometimes you can snap the splitter to the belt before you build anything out of here. Sometimes it just works because it's lined up with the output of the building. So it's just, I tend to just not even worry about it because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I'd rather just do it the consistent way, but that is an option. Oh, uh, these are supposed to be mergers. I don't know what I'm thinking. So yeah, they're not snapping because of the belt, but let's just see if the belt wasn't there. Yeah, see, it is snapping. So that is an option sometimes. But you're gonna have to build the belt anyway. So, there you go. Merger this time. There we go. Connect up our lift, and you can grab a belt to make sure the connections are good, and they're all good. So that's it for the connections. We will remove our um, end pieces so that it'll tile nicely with the next one, as usual. And then we'll go ahead and connect up power, and we will be done with our blender bl blueprint. And the next one is going to be, the next blueprint I'm going to do is going to be converters. That will probably be the last blueprint I do um, in this series. I don't think there's any other buildings we really need to cover. Now, I tried a couple different things for power on this one. I think the best options include going across the front to about here and then connecting through kind of behind the building. But the problem is on this end, you kind of need the pole to be outside the boundaries. So what I went with is actually just an elevated pole design. So I grabbed a beam, if I can find it. Uh, there we go, painted beam. 
and I went up, I believe it's five meters, and I locked it, and I scooched it right inside that corner there. And then on top of that beam, I placed a power pole very tall, and then that is enough to connect to the building. And then it's enough to connect to the next one. So we do the same thing. We get a painted beam. We get it down here next to the corner. We go up five meters. We lock it. We scooch it. We place it. Bop it. Spin it. Twist it. Get our power pole. And then hook that power line up to this guy. Hook that one up to the building. And you're good to go. Obviously. Then if you tile them, you just connect that power pole to the next one. So I hope you like it. That's the Blender Blueprint. Nothing too fancy. We're going to go ahead and save it as usual and then tile it. And that will be it. So this is blend example blenders X2. And I'll call it Mark 5. I won't even mention. Eh, we well, might as well mention pipe 2. But it, it should use pipe tier 2. There's no reason to use tier 1 pipes at this point in the game. And I already did the directory. Let's select the icon to be a blenders. And there you go. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll head over and build our example. The fuel generator one's still sitting here. We can remove that. And then we'll grab our example blueprint here, example blenders. Let's do another example where we don't go in a straight line. I think those are uh, the most interesting. The straight line ones are quite easy to connect. So we are going to have, so remember the inputs come in uh, right here and the outputs go out there. So. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap the inputs kind of back around to be closer. You could set it so the outputs are the close one, but the problem when you do that is you end up um, having to wrap all the inputs all the way around to the back. And then you wrap the outputs. Uh, the outputs would be going this way and you'd wrap those around. So then in that case, you're making four things go way farther around the edge. So, at least with the way this blueprint's rotated, it makes more sense to do it this way, where the inputs are the close, close ones. And the blue line will tell you that you're lined up with the other blueprint, and then of course you can scooch as close or as far as you want. If you like it to be right up next to each other, you can do that. You can leave a walkway between the two. You could leave enough space for a catwalk, maybe. I don't know if that's four or five clicks. I haven't measured, but in this case, we will leave a uh, zero space, I think, just to make it nice and tight. And I have no power back here, so I can't float. So yeah, and now, again, this is where sometimes it is nice if you leave these uh, stackables on the end, because these pipes wouldn't line up nicely. You know, if I try to do this, it's going to do weird things. So I actually, in this case, am going to rebuild the uh, pipelines so that we can connect up the pipes nicely at kind of what feel like right angles here, like this. Right, because that, that looks nice. And then I actually am going to bring power over for my hovering because that will be quite helpful. Uh, where's the nearest? Is it you? Are you a power line that's reasonably near? Yeah, we'll just bring this back here. Because the belts, again, similar thing. You might be able to just use the straight mode. Yeah, the straight mode on belts is nice. But you can always add the belt supports there if you want to. So there you go. So now the inputs are coming into those two buildings and around to these two buildings. Um, the nice thing here is the power is nice and tall, so you can just connect across. And then now we just have to deal with the outputs. So to go around these, we are going to need extra supports to be placed a little bit further out. So you're going to go one, two squares for your supports. And then again, if you want to have less segments of stuff, you can remove all of that. Place your pipeline straight to the new support. Place the belt straight to the new support. And then we do the same thing over here. So you can see it's clearly more work um, to set up things this way. I think I put it here, right? No, I was on this one. Clearly more work to set it up rather than just doing a straight line, but it also might fit your base better or fit the space better, so that's why I'm demoing it like so. Invalid conveyor belt shape. I don't know why it says that sometimes when it's the exact same shape that it's going to be on default. Um, so yeah, a little weird sometimes, but there you go. There is our 
almost clip. I mean, technically that's clipping. That doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, you can go one space out further. Also, we didn't mention the clipping that happens. As I mentioned it in previous episodes, between like the mergers and the pipes, if you don't like the way that looks, then you can just go one higher with the belts, of course. Same here, you can go one higher with the belts if you're not a fan of that. I personally don't mind. I just imagine that, you know, the splitter's got a little, it's like a little saddle, you know, it's sitting on the, on the pipe there, but up to you whether you do it that way or not. And there is our four blenders in kind of a nice little square here. That is the benefit to tiling it like this. Um, it is a little more work. And obviously if you wanted something like eight blenders, it's nicer to have four and four than to have eight in a long row. At least in most cases, that feels a little nicer. So it's nice, you could always go four and then tile it like this, four here and connect around the back. So I hope that all makes sense. As always, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Converters will be the next video and potentially the last, unless there's something I'm forgetting about. So as always, uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.